you won't believe how I got to the point of reviewing this little song, but it certainly was one of the fastest lesson ideas on my channel ever, a couple of hours fast. So I was sitting around playing some songs as usual and I thought, wow, I should really learn how to play We Are The Champions by Queen. Obviously I've seen the Bohemian Rhapsody movie, there was even a little snippet of Suit and so Swing there. I revisited all the Life 8 performances and I was like, you know what, let's learn We Are The Champions. It's a cool little song, a lot of interesting chords there. And sure enough, here goes the chorus. Here on No Time for Losers, this line sounds exactly like the Physia and the Steel, albeit in different key, but still. Sunday morning, here we are. Now, I'm not saying Mark copied Queen or something, not even try to mean that. It's like, I would say that the opening line was taken from Chopin's third etude, which Chopin called the best melody he's ever found. By the way, even the Bohemian Rhapsody has a microscopic piano quote from this very piece. unintentional of course it just goes to show how many great songs are connected more than you would expect from the moment i've learned this queen song i was constantly thinking about the physia and the steel the physia and the steel and that happens you get inspired you get ideas difference being mark writes songs somebody learns songs somebody teach songs it's a cycle of inspiration and you can't throw any part out of it and that's why i'm here the Fizzy and the Steel is in open G tuning, played on a national guitar and it's from Kill to Get Crimson album. This album is a very experimental album since half of it was filled with waltzes and another half was played by Mark using a pick. So this song features this shadow style lead guitar playing. Again, talking about the inspiration, Chopin. Queen, Shadows, and I haven't even started discussing this song yet. There's a lot of similar chord shapes here. Open strings is a G chord since it's an open tuning. This is A minor adjusted for open G tuning. The bass goes the whole step up. The open note on the top creates this suspended 4 feeling, so you can call it A minor suspended 4 chord, but who cares, it sounds cool. This is B flat major, added 9th. All you need to know is that it's just one fret higher than the previous A minor. This one looks like A minor 7, but sounds like C major, because it is. But because it's too hard to play the bass, it gets replaced with an open bass, making it C with G in the bass. Another chord I discussed a million times already. This time of open G shape not appear in 
Romeo and Juliet, but it does appear often in Mark's open G songs. C added ninth or regular C. To recap this part of the song, G, A minor, B flat, C. It is also in the verse. You may say, yeah, but what about this pedal bass? And you'd be right. Of course you can dish the bass in these two chords. Making your life easier and making the full circle with this pedal bass sound. On one guitar though, and especially when the song builds up, it sounds better with full chords anyway. So it's up to you. Turn around to the chorus. Is your typical Shadows inspired turn around? There is at least three ways to play it. With a hammer on. With a hammer on and a third. Or my favorite the face slide. We're always ending with open string because it gives you a split second to jump up here on the seventh fret to the chorus. It starts with a bar chord, which is a version of this shape, D shape from Romeo and Juliet. You know it's D then. This is C shape, but up here in the fifth position, so it's an F major. Oh, I just realized this is actually all D shape. Moving all over the neck. It's just down here there is a knot instead of the finger. Open G tuning makes it so hard to distinguish between C and D shapes. Anyway, as I said, who cares how it's called? Again, a bar chord, F, C, open G, turn around. C minor, same shape as minor chords before, three fingers in a row and first finger da down here. It's even possible to throw in an open first string here. For it to sound even more mysterious and haunting. The rare occasion where not proper blocking of the string can actually help. The last chord to discuss is this half diminished one. There's two ways to approach it, hard one and hard one. Yes, the hard one is to hold this minor shape, B minor Romeo shape, and add the second finger bass. But it's an extremely hard stretch available only for people who've played before. Much easier is to go with the first finger down in the first position with a mini bar up here and maintain this bass on the second fret. But it's also not easy because have to carefully mute the fourth string. If you won't do it, it would ruin everything. So pick your poison. No, no easy shortcuts here. After the C, C minor 7 foot 5, it's open G again. 
fifth to fourth fret makes it G major seven, of course. How about that one? Can you guess from where this melody came from? Inspiration is everywhere. It's not for me. C, G. And that's the whole song. It's very short, very simple. It's not up there in the sky of the greats like Romeo and Juliet, but it's still a very good song, or to put it simply, a Mark Knopfler song. Keep playing good songs and thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.